You might be poisoned by AI in the future. Well, not physically, but your artwork may be poisoned. A new poison software program called Nightshade has emerged, capable of causing chaos amidst generative AI models. Before we get into this episode, remember to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you love futurism and want more videos like this. Nightshade empowers artists to subtly manipulate the pixels in their artwork, creating invisible changes that can wreak havoc on AI training sets. Any artwork that we create, we're going to have to accept in the future that this artwork could, and probably will, have a life of its own because it's going to inspire thousands of iterations of that piece of art. The techno-philosophical implications of Nightshade and other future AI poison technologies are about to change how we create AI art in the future. AI poison was actually born out of a growing controversy surrounding AI companies training their generative AI on unauthorized artists' work. By utilizing tools like Nightshade, artists can poison training data for AI models, resulting in strange model outputs. Imagine a world where dogs morph into cats and cars transform into cows. All thanks to the invisible hand of Nightshade. A recent MIT Technology Review exclusive provided a glimpse into this fascinating and disturbing tool. According to Ben Zhao, a professor at the University of Chicago, Nightshade could tip the scales in favor of artists, creating a powerful deterrent against disrespecting artists' copyright and intellectual property. AI companies like OpenAI, Meta, Google, and Stability AI have recently been under siege, facing numerous lawsuits from artists alleging copyright infringement and unauthorized personal data scraping. The developers of Nightshade hope this will serve as a significant deterrent, forcing these powerhouses to respect the rights of creators and their intellectual property. Here's how I feel about this. Should we be poisoning these AI generative systems before we even see what they can actually do? That's the first question. The second question is, if we poison things with things like Nightshade, then what's the future of style ownership when it comes to art? See, that's where we're gonna get ourselves into trouble because you're already seeing musicians who are being sued, not because the notes are the same, but because the style sounds like someone else's work. That's a slippery slope. In addition to Nightshade, the team led by Professor Ben Zhao also developed Glaze, another innovative tool designed to protect artists' unique styles from AI scraping. Glaze works in a similar way to Nightshade, subtly altering images and their pixels in ways that are invisible to humans, but capable of tricking machine learning models. The ultimate plan is to integrate Nightshade into Glaze, providing artists with a choice to use the data poisoning tool or not. The team is also making Nightshade open source, encouraging others to tailor it to their needs and create unique versions. The more artists that use Nightshade and its derivatives, the more effective it will become. Nightshade exploits a fundamental vulnerability in generative AI models, their dependence on vast amounts of data. By manipulating this data, in this case, images, Nightshade can cause significant disruption. Artists who wish to upload their work online but also want to protect their images from AI scraping can use Glaze to mask their art style. They can also choose to activate Nightshade when AI developers scour the internet for data. These poison AI images find their way into the model's data set, causing it to malfunction. Once infected with poison data, an AI model can begin to learn erroneous associations, such as interpreting images of hats as cakes or handbags as toasters. Removing this poison data is a difficult and time-consuming task, as each corrupted sample must be individually identified and deleted. Despite its potential benefits, there is a risk of misuse with Nightshade. Unscrupulous individuals could potentially use this data poisoning technique for malicious purposes. However, to cause significant disruptions to large, more powerful models, thousands of poison samples would be required due to the vast amount of data on which these models are trained. The way I'm thinking of this is, is separated in two sort of distinct categories. One is that nature is technological, that any creation, any piece of art that we create is coming from one original source, and we're just breaking off little pieces of that, and we're calling it because art has been made into a commerce, we're calling that our copyright, that you know we own this style, or we own this particular 
way of seeing the world, when in fact we know that art goes through movements. I mean, when you think of Cubism, when you think of Futurism, because that was an art movement as well, those movements are just an agreement in society, right? Artists as groups decide we're going to view the world in this specific way and that's going to be the movement of this period. And so we all agree on specific parameters of style, whether that's geometry, whether that's color, whether that's the, the medium, whatever. All of that is decided on when an art movement begins. Now, that's the first side of this. The other side of this is I don't love the idea of an artist having their work mimicked in such a way that you would mistake it for that original artist's work. That does seem illegitimate, but I'm not sure we can stop that. Here's the real question. Should we be trying to make money off of style instead of making money off of an individual painting that may or may not change as far as the artist's style, because artists change styles over their careers all the time. This is a slippery slope when you start trying to copyright a style. That's when we're gonna get ourselves into trouble. And I think, you know, when you start poisoning technology before we even know where it's going to go and how good it can be, that's a very dangerous thing to do. I guess the base idea here is that we really shouldn't force people to use their creativity for supporting their livelihood. Because that pressure of trying to create to make money is one of the worst feelings. And any artist who's ever been in that scenario, and I've been in that scenario many times as a professional photographer, filmmaker, whatever, or painter, I have been in those scenarios where my rent depends on me making something amazing. And it is soul crushing because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And then you're left standing there thinking, not only am I a failure financially, but I'm a failure because I couldn't complete this piece of artwork properly. So I predict, and I do see that this is sort of the leisure society that we're moving towards, is that eventually, and I think it will be AI art that will help artists make that transition. Whether they are using those tools to rapidly make you know, pieces of art that can support them financially, or whether it's universal basic income and your livelihood and your artwork are completely separate, so you're not worried about those two mixing together. That is the future that we really should be hoping for. The emergence of tools like Nightshade underscores the importance of developing robust defenses against such attacks, as it may only be a matter of time before poisoning attacks on modern machine learning models become commonplace. Nightshade could significantly disrupt the AI sector by forcing companies into paying royalties, thereby shifting the power balance back toward creators. Some artists see these tools as a powerful method to regain control over their work. And I, I'll tell you a, a story that happened to me because I also paint. I created a paint, a set of paintings. I photographed the paintings and I put them online. I put them on my social media. I think it was on Instagram. A couple of weeks after it had been up, I got a message. Someone DM'd me and said, uh, these paintings are really nice if they weren't, you know, knocking off this other artist. And he gave me the name of the artist he thought that I was copying. I had never heard of her. I had never seen her work ever. I'd never seen her work. I'd never heard of her. And when I looked at her work, the similarities were color and geometry. But she was using colored wood blocks to create her three-dimensional art. And my paintings were oil with fabric cut into different geometric shapes. So they were two completely different kinds of art, but I could see similarities overlapped. So for example, in that instance, does she own the style or do I own the style? I mean, that's where we're gonna get ourselves in trouble here. Put it this way, none of the imagery that I have created um, when it comes to Mid Journey and the styles that I've created, none of those, as far as I can tell, are exact copies of anyone else's work. They're, they are original outputs. They just are similar in style. So we're not saying that it's a replica, you know, because there is that. I mean, there are people who replicate 
to the exact style, the exact image. I mean, those are forgeries. We're not talking about forgeries. We're talking about a cousin. I guess let's put it that way. It's a cousin of the original artist's work. So it's not a one-to-one. -one. I mean, obviously if they still and replicate the image or the painting as a replica, then of course that they should sue for that. But if you inspire someone to create a derivative of a piece of artwork based on your style, I'm not sure that we can stop that. I'm not sure we should stop that. In the ever-evolving world of AI, Nightshade represents a tool for artists worldwide. By empowering artists to fight back against copyright infringement, Nightshade is just the tip of the iceberg. With the tool set to be open sourced, we can expect to see a multitude of creative applications and modifications in the future, further fueling the fascinating intersection of art and AI and the idea of intellectual property. The philosophical questions surrounding the use of AI poison software like Nightshade to intentionally corrupt AI generative art delve into ethics, the nature of creativity, and the essence of artistic ownership. So now I'll leave you with three techno-philosophical questions. What are the boundaries in the realm of artificial intelligence and art? Does the intentional disruption of AI-created work constitute a form of vandalism or sabotage? And if so, what ethical considerations govern this digital realm? If AI is an extension of human imagination, does corrupting its output challenge the integrity of the creative process? Who owns the artistic output of an AI? And is it justifiable to alter or destroy it? If an AI's creation is tampered with, who is affected? The AI, the developers, or the public? And what rights do they have concerning the integrity of the work? This question touches on the philosophical debate about the rights pertaining to digital creations and the entities that create them. My name is Gray Scott, and this is Futuristic Now. See you in the future.